Hi, I'm Chase, and today we're going to take a tour of the representation of Bankers Farmstead and also some of the things we have on the museum property. Let's see if Grace is inside. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us. Let's so right next to Banneker's cabin, we have a replica of what his herb garden might have looked like. Herbs were very common in the colonial era for medicinal purposes. So yeah, so let's say you had a stomach ache back then, you would take some uh, mint you grew in your garden and uh, turn it into tea and then drink that and that'd be used as a remedy back then. We found this pawpaw tree close to the museum and these are native to the region and they are edible. The fruit tastes a little bit like mangoes and bananas to some people, but other people don't really like them. So this is the vegetable garden that we have in the park. So let's take a look inside. Well, here we are in the garden and we're here on June 21st. So if you come to the park and visit the garden, you might notice that things are starting to grow in a little bit more. So on these mounds, we have our corn which is just starting to sprout. And pretty soon we will be planting some squash and beans with the corn. The Native Americans used to call those the three sisters because they grow so well together. And it looks like our squash plant is doing really good too. Uh, the entire area is closed off by a wattle fence and a wattle fence is a style of fence that pretty much involves um, weaving wood between different posts and it would have been used back in the 18th century. Um, and I actually helped build this wall fence and it was a lot of work. Um, just like cut down a lot of branches um, and small trees and you pretty much have to uh, just find a lot of them and weave them in between the posts. So here we are at the spring head which is on the Banneker property. It likely does not date to Banneker's time, but it is of a later time and it is historic. Um, but we do want to take this moment to talk about the importance of water. Banneker needed water for everything. Everybody back then needed water for everything. We still need water for everything. It is a very, very important resource. So in order to get his water, Mr. Banneker would have had to take buckets and he would have had something called a yoke, which would allow him to uh, carry the buckets by and he would have got his water from a spring near his farmstead what he, he would walk to or he might have had a well close to or on his property so this is a close-up of the well and it very likely dates to the middle of the 19th century or in other terms the middle of the 1800s and this is just a close-up of the water there's a lot of leaves and debris but you can see how clear the water is. You can even see that white stone on the bottom and the water that is in there right now is several inches deep. So behind me is a vernal pool, which you can see off of the yellow trail and vernal pools are a really great resource. They are great for the environment. They help regulate mosquitoes. There's always lots of tadpoles in here in the springtime. Um, we don't really know if it was here when Banneker was here or if it was created naturally or man-made, but we do know that it's here now. And as we're filming this on June 21st, it is dry, but if you come down in the spring, you most likely will find some water here. So right here, we're in the orchard and we have spotted this tiny baby rabbit it's just nibbling on some greens. You can see all sorts of wildlife here if you come for a hike or just a picnic or a visit. So right now we're standing in the middle of the orchard which is kind of adjacent to the stone Banneke house. Okay. So back when Mr. Banneker lived he also would have had an orchard and we're not sure if his orchard would have been in the same spot that the orchard's in now um, but we knew that he had an orchard on his property. Um, he would have grown um, different types of trees um, and he would have uh, sold the fruit um, from the trees at the market and he also would have eaten them. And, and the variety of trees that we have at the orchard today would have been similar to what Mr. Banneker would have had back then. And those are trees like walnut trees, pear trees, and apple trees. And there's a deer here. We get a lot of white-tailed deer in this park too. 
So this is a tree that is just adjacent to the orchard and it is at the mouth of one of the entrances of the yellow trail and it's called a mulberry tree and you can see all the fruit on it right now. The fruit is falling off and this fruit is edible. Okay. So directly behind us is the Banneke house. We also sometimes call it the Truth house and the Hines house after the Hines family who built it. The Hines were farmers in the area and they acquired the property after Benjamin Banneker had already died. At some point during the 20th century, the Truth family acquired the, the farmhouse um, and it became the Truth property. At some point during the 1980s, Baltimore County uh, was able to find out that uh, the house stood on Mr. Banneker's former property and the museum was able to acquire the house. We want to thank you so much for coming with us on our park and farmstead tour today. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.